welcome back to our third tutorial. In tutorial one we looked at how to set up a brand new Microsoft team for one of your classes. In the second tutorial we looked at some of the settings and how we can give permissions to users and owners. We also looked at how to generate that code that students can use to join your Microsoft team. And in our third tutorial we're going to look at channels. Channels are a way in which we can organize our Microsoft team and lay out how we want to use it. And this really sets apart Microsoft Teams in many ways. The first you will realize is that there is a general team. That applies to every team you set up and it's there by default. It cannot be changed and it cannot be edited at this stage. So it's called the general and it becomes effectively the home channel, the main channel in which a lot of features are available. And then we have all the other channels. Okay, and you can add as many of these as you want. Some of these you might want to apply to the whole class, and then there may be some channels that you only want some pupils to be able to access, and you can choose to make those private. So maybe you're going to set up some group work. Maybe some of your students are repeating a particular unit. Uh, whatever your reason for setting up those channels, we're able to do that. And that is the beauty of Microsoft Teams, that if you need something, it is very, very responsive to the needs of educators. So well done if you spotted the difference. I have set up four new channels, one for each of the units. Okay. And how did I do that? Well, very simply, I used that main button called More Options, the three small dots, or the ellipsis button, uh, that I showed you in the second tutorial. And in the second tutorial, when we wanted to control the settings for the whole team, we used that first option. Now we're using the second option to add a channel. So I'll just show you that again. Each of these channels do have their own small three dot more options button. So we're going to be wary of that. And it really is this top main options button that applies to the whole team that we click. And we have these options. Manage team we used for the settings. And now we're going to add a channel. So I'm going to add a fifth one. And you will notice just to keep it in the order that I want, the channels will normally be set with a alphabetical order okay so what I'm going to try and do is make sure that I use a numeral at the very very start to keep the order that I want my channels to appear in so number five I might call this the revision channel okay I have chosen to keep it open and available to all the students or if I wanted just the students to be able to access that at a, at a later stage I might keep that private but for now I'm going to keep that standard and accessible to everyone on the team because I do want it to be visible for everybody logging in I'm going to make sure that I tick the box to say automatically show this channel in everyone's channel list and that means that they will see what you see there is an option when you start to use lots of different channels and you start to grow your team that some people may choose to hide some of the channels that are not as relevant to them and of course we could do that if we set out a whole year's worth of work we could hide some of those for the students so it's not so overwhelming and they're just really focusing in on the units that we're using on a day-to-day -day basis okay so now that we've set up our channels we want to try and work out what our channels can do so the first thing to do is just to realize there is a very slight difference between the main general channel which does have the assignments and the grade features attached to that and then we have these other channels that we've created and at the minute they're set by default just to have your posts files and notes and essentially the posts are what we discovered in the first channel the conversation we can have and you may re be able to structure this according to your modules so you may have posts that apply particularly to one group again the files will be another way of ensuring that all your documents and files for your students are easily accessible and the students can find them very quickly and our notes creates a OneNote section particular to this unit and again when we look at the OneNote section we're going to unpack the notes in slightly more detail okay so I'm going to very quickly create a new channel and I'm going to call this one six and the study of Macbeth okay again it's open to all members of the team and now we're going to start to flesh out what a team channel could look like so it adds the channel very quickly into our section it keeps it in the order that we have for the numbers running down the side 
and here we have Macbeth ready to go. What I love about this is the structure that it gives to learning. When we go back to pedagogy, when we go back to looking at the big picture, uh, we go back to sharing the overview with students and constantly revisiting where we are in our path of learning, then channels really fits into that. And again, it is our ability to structure very clearly on behalf of our students and to, to really lay it on a plate for them, all the materials that we have under the correct topics and headings. So for our study of Macbeth, we're going to put all the information for Macbeth into this particular channel. Any comments or any discussion we have about Macbeth, we'll be able to do here. And it means if a student wants to go back and revisit part of a conversation, they know exactly where to find that. Same with the files. If I had a particular Macbeth folder uh, in my shared drive or on my OneDrive or in my documents on my PC, I can start to upload those files. And again, we will look at that as a separate unit. So the tabs become for each section our go-to store and making it really, really easy and accessible for the students to find. So you think about all the materials and the learning resources that we want to share with students. Sometimes it's going to be a PDF handout. Other times it's going to be a PowerPoint that we would use in class. Other times it's going to be videos from Stream uh, and Microsoft Word documents. But a lot of the time, it's going to be a very simple hyperlink to a website. And for me, I think hugely uh, great resource for teachers, particularly for online learning, is the BBC Bite Size web pages. And I'm going to post that up to the top of the channel. And what I love about the ability of putting in a hyperlink into our Microsoft Teams is that the students can see it here every time they log on. They don't have to go and load up another browser. They're able to access the web link within Microsoft Teams. Okay, so we've had a look at how we can use those channels for learning and teaching. Now let's have a little look at how we can use some of those channels to structure a professional team for staff or colleagues or a particular department or faculty that you're working in. So here I have my department, the RE department in school. And you can see that I have, for each of the main, we have a general uh, channel, we have an ethics of philosophy, and then we start to break it down into areas for each year group. And indeed we have some hidden away, uh, year 9, 8 and 10, available to us as well. And this becomes a great way in which we can start to begin to share resources to start that conversation about how we can work together and collaborate as one team to support our pupils in their learning. And particularly during online learning, when so much uh, collaboration is required uh, to share out the workload of designing learning and resources, this is really, really useful for keeping in contact with colleagues. Similarly, in a whole staff team, so for a whole staff, we have set up the channels again. You can start to see how the channels group together uh, what's useful. So we have a general channel. Then we have our collaborative learning team where we share uh, professional experience about how pupils learn best. We have our digital strategy and IT training. And this really, we start to bring uh, lots of resources. So we have colleagues who start to recommend good websites and good podcasts they've had. Uh, we get to pin up here, no better than the Microsoft playlist by Mike Tholson. So it's a great way of being able to separate all the aspects into very neat channels, which is the, the aim of the game, into very neat, well-organized channels, and the ability to share resources with staff within Teams. And again, we can also pin very important key documents. So here we have a very quick short guide to using Microsoft Teams in 10 steps. And again, it's really uh, positioned high and front and center for staff to be able to see and to be able to really readily access. What I love about Microsoft Teams is its versatility that you can use it to suit whatever purpose you need so whether that's to have a learning and teaching team for your students whether that's to have a faculty or staff team 
but also in my school it's really important that we're able to communicate to each year group and to tutor groups within that year group so pastoral care is at the heart of what we do in school and it's also at the heart of what we do online as part of our Microsoft Teams and you can see here how I'm beginning to use the private channels to be able to communicate with each individual tutor group. So the head of year is able to post up uh, really important notices for the attention of the whole year group. That might be about upcoming deadlines for applications for university or whatever happens to be. And within each private channel, a tutor and their smaller group of about 20 to 24 students are able to have an ongoing conversation about things that are relevant to their tutor group. And they're able to have the privacy to do that within that space as a tutor group. So you can see how the channels there have a particularly good function for each and allow us to be able to communicate. And again, what I really love is this idea that in each channel we can pin really relevant tabs to the attention of students. So here we have a very quick access guide for students and how to make sure they can access Teams on all their devices and really get the most out of it. And it's really important that the pupils have that front and centre and ready to access at all times. Okay, so we're back in our test team and we're back in our Macbeth channel. And we just want to have a look at some of the other more options that are available to us and specific to each channel. So as we said before, this more options will control the whole team and each individual channel allows you to tailor very specifically the preferences for each of the individual channels and that again opens up this layer of control for you be, to be able to decide per channel what you want the users to be able to do and what you wish that they are not able to do. So I'm going to use the more options and we have channel notifications this is really important again because we can decide when we personally are notified and each individual student or member of staff in the team can do similarly. Some, some channels we may want more notifications for and others we may want less. Okay. As we go down the more options, we can hide the channel on and off. And that means that if we hide it, that the students, it goes into a slightly hidden column. And I'll show you that in a little minute. And if we want to show that again, we just simply toggle that back on again. So to hide and to show. We have the options to manage the channel. And here we have this idea of setting individual preferences for each of the channels. So you can control the permissions that you want to allow pupils to create messages, to post messages, and you can decide in which channels they are able to do that. Okay. So you have a whole range of settings that you can tailor to make sure that the channels work exactly as you want them to and as you desire. We then also have the opportunity to email directly into this channel. So if we're using our Outlook emails or emails, we can actually forward on an email directly into a discussion channel for a particular group. The same, we can link to the channel. We can edit this channel and change the name. And we can also delete the channel. Now, by deleting the channel, you will get rid of the conversations that have taken place, but any of the files you have uploaded will still be accessible. That will go into your SharePoint where you'll be able to retrieve them. Okay, so we've had a chance just to recap on using these channels, how to create a channel to set some structure to our team, and we can use that across learning and teaching teams or across staff teams. And we've looked at the individual options to be able to tailor each of those channels specifically to how we want them to work and whether we want them to be private or public, shown or hidden. And we know how to edit and we know how to use all of these settings and if we need to, to delete the channel. So in our next tutorial, we're going to use this function up the top to add a tab and using the tab section to be able to add apps and files into the most prominent place in each of those channels and that really starts to bring your team to life and that really starts to unlock online potential. So we'll see you in the next tutorial.